what you get for wearing headphones. A lot of noise. All right, we'll be in Ezekiel chapter 47. If you get to Daniel, you have gone too far. Turn around, get back the other way, all right? Ezekiel 47, titled this sermon, You Can't Swim in Shallow Water. If the water is ankle deep, you can drown in it, I hear. If you are like, you know, you can drown in a little bit of water, but you can't swim in it. It's just not deep enough. Tonight, as we talk about this passage of Scripture, this revelation that Ezekiel was given from God, the water represents the Holy Spirit, and keep that in mind as we talk about this, all right? In the physical realm, I believe that the physical realm and the spiritual realm kind of parallel each other. In the physical realm, if you want your body to be in good shape, Y'all know as well as I do, you got to exercise. You got to work that thing out. And you got to keep going because as soon as you stop going, that's when it seems like that's when people die, when they stop going. So momentum is paramount to health. I think that, like I said, the, the physical realm mirrors the, the spiritual realm in that what we need to do is keep our momentum going spiritually or it's just going to die. It doesn't matter how long you might have served or how little you have served. There's going to be different moments in your life where God wants to take you deeper. Just like the song we were just singing. And all it really takes for you to get in deeper is for you to allow your faith to be made stronger. Because it is by faith that we, that we believe, that we do, that everything is existing. So momentum is, 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 is evidence that there's still life. Momentum is paramount to going forward. And it is, it is where there is life. It's where there's hope. And if you get momentum spiritually, then you start seeing uh, miracles and, and healings. And mm, let's pray. Our Father God, I, I ask you tonight that you would just please reveal to us your Holy Spirit in, in a, a more powerful, deeper way than we might have ever experienced your Holy Spirit before, Father. Jesus, tonight I lift up those that are needing an extra touch. God, I pray for Tammy Gallops tonight. Is She's been having chest pains for a day. God, I pray that you'd heal her. God, I pray that tonight you would just let your presence be felt with her. And God, whatever's going on, you'd make it known to her. Jesus, I ask you tonight that as we're in your presence, that you would give us a Pentecostal moment. A moment when, God, we, we know that we have been in the presence of the Holy Spirit. God, just please move through this place tonight, I ask in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Let's, uh, let's read our text here. It's out of Ezekiel chapter 47. I'm going to read verses 1 through 9. The man brought me back to the entrance of the temple, and I saw water coming out from under the threshold of the temple toward the east for the temple faced east. The water was coming down from under the south side of the temple, south of the altar. He then brought me out through the north gate and led me around the outside of the outer gate facing east, and the water was flowing from the south side. What? This don't make no sense. Is it is a temple with water just flowing out of it on a few sides and stuff? Okay, you're, you're with me so far. That's exactly what's happening. There's a temple which represents God Almighty, and there's water flowing out of it, which represents the Holy Spirit. We together? That's all Ezekiel's seeing, folks. That's all he's seeing is the Holy Spirit flooding out of God. That's what he's seeing. All right. Now, 
Verse number three, as the man went eastward with a measuring line in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits, and he led me through the water that was ankle deep. He measured off another thousand cubits, and he led me through water that was knee deep. He measured off another thousand and led me through water that was up to the waist. He measured off another thousand, but now it was a river that I could not cross because the water had risen and was deep enough to swim in, a river that no one could cross. And he asked me, Son of man, do you see this? And he led me back to the bank of the river. When I arrived there, I saw a great number of trees on each side of the river, and he said to me, This water flows toward the eastern region and goes down into the Araba, and that's the Jordan Valley, till it hits the Dead Sea. When it empties into the sea, the water there becomes fresh. It says, I believe in the King James, that it heals the water. See, that that water, it's a little brackish where it hits the fresh water, the salt water, but eventually that salt water spreads and makes that water livable for the fish and the creatures that live in that water. So that brackish, salty water is being healed by that water. Y'all, that's the Holy Spirit. Once it flows over, it washes clean and makes pure, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Sin can't live where the Holy Spirit is, can it? It can't. It can't. All right, let's not get ahead of ourselves. All right. I think that what we're looking at here about this the stream and how this stream became a river, all right, not because of that there was more water appearing in front of him, it was his proximity to the water. He kept moving deeper and deeper. God was taking him deeper and deeper. And deeper, do you see that? How many times did he take him out deeper? Four or five times? He just kept taking Ezekiel out deeper and deeper and deeper. It was up to his ankles, then his knees, then his waist. Then it was up so much that couldn't nobody cross it. It was just so much. Where do you think all of that water come from? It wasn't new. As you get on down through life, you take a... You just take like the Alabama River down here. It's made up of the Coosa River and the Tallapoosa River. And those rivers are made up of Hatchet Creek and Wegufka Creek and all the other creeks around. Hatchet Creek, all of them feed into that. There ain't no new water, y'all. It just comes out of the earth, flows down, and goes back in it. I mean, it's, there's no new water. There's no new Holy Spirit. The same amount of Holy Spirit that was available and showed up at Pentecost is still available and can show up today. The same amount of Holy Spirit that God gave to Peter and John and Paul, He can give to you. He can. Why can't He? What God wants us to do is to trust Him to take us a little deeper than we are now. I want to go a little deeper with God. I want to, I want to level up my, my, my association with God. I want, to get, I want to get more than I had. Do you feel? Do you feel that? Do you? <laughs> Another thing I want us to look at though, not just where the, what the water is, or I want us to look at where the water comes from, and the water comes from the altar, and the altar is the place of surrender, isn't it? Isn't it we always give an invitation to come forward? Take a step out in faith? Because the altar is the place of surrender. The altar is the place where you, you let go of the things that you're holding on to. The altar is the place where you say, I, I, I need... I need all of you because I want to be healed all the way. I like that. Everything starts at the beginning, right? And that water is coming from the temple, from the altar, 
which represents God. It's, it's, it's God. Anyway, anyway. When Ezekiel went to step out into this water, I'll put it to you like this. The altar is where the old man dies, where the sin has to die. And just like when Moses had to take off his shoes to fulfill his commitment, I think we need to, and what that was all about was when Moses went to the burning bush and God told him to remove his shoes, it was to remove his selfish ambition so that his want was not more important to him than God's want. And that's why Moses was told to take off his shoes. When Ezekiel was led into the water, he was led there by God because God wanted to take him deeper. God wanted to move him. He wanted to take him deeper than he was. And you can't be taken by God if you're resisting. Right? We got to remove the shoes and put on... What does he tell us in, uh, in Ephesians to put on? He tells us to have feet that are, that are ready and quick, right? And you can't have feet that are ready and quick for the Lord if they are still wearing some old beat-up toe jams with your own self-interest covering your feet, right? Because you know what happens when you wear feet that are controlled by a different will than God's? Do you know? Do you want to know? Do you want to see? It's like remote control shoes that just you can't help it. And it's like, I'm not going the direction that I should be going right now. Right? right? And you feel weird, don't you? Because this is not right. Yeah. Why would you relinquish control to someone else when you know how to walk? That's what we think. I have found that the less I try to tread water and just let go and float in it, the better things go. Because when you let go and let God do it, then things always work according to His will. But it is when you are in the shallow water. You're in the water. Yeah? You are in the water. You know you're saved. You're in the water. And you're like, okay, all right, God, thank you for saving me. Still judgmental though. I'm still, I'm still a little bit anxious. I'm still... I'm still a little bit, you know, messed up. I'm saved. I believe. But man, there's still a lot of weirdness going on. You feel like that? You feel like there's still a lot messed up about you? Jesus said in, in Luke 9 23, if you would. Deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow Him daily. Which just simply means, take off your shoes. Die to self. That's what crucified daily means. Today, was it lived for you or God? Alright? Paul said in Galatians 2.20, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. So now I'm not living by strength of my own body. I'm living by faith. That's what Paul said. And that's what we should say as children of God. Are you living by faith? To live by faith, you've got to let go of... It's like letting go of human logic and reasoning. Because you are placing your eternity and your salvation in the hands of someone that you have never seen. Okay? And it sounds like nonsense to the world that don't understand who it is that's calling and knocking on the door of their heart. I've never met a human being that could honestly tell me that God has never called them. I've never met one. I've, I have asked a lot of people, has God ever called you? Have you ever felt God call you in your heart? I felt something. Every single person I asked, nobody has ever told me I've never felt anything. 
Everybody has felt God's pull. God ain't going to let you live on this planet without bothering you some about your sins and letting you know that He loves you, right? Yeah. So you get to that point of salvation and you get your feet in the water. But God is wanting to take you from that place of ankle deep water to something a little bit deeper. Something where the current's a little bit stronger. Something that just might knock you off of your feet. Just like you did with Ezekiel. Take you a little deeper. Okay? Now let's go a little bit further. And let's go a little bit further. You see what God's doing here with this man? In our life, there may be somebody on the other side of the river just waiting on us to get to the other side so that we could be the miracle in their life. There may be somebody waiting on you to get to the other side right now. And they've been waiting on you for a long time. Or maybe we need to get in a little bit deeper because it's there that we're going to learn to really trust God. You know? The deeper he went, the bigger the river got. The more that he got in over his head is like the more he died to self, the more God took over. If you are in a river and the water is rising, eventually it's going to get up over your head, and you're going to have to tread that water. You're going to have to try to stay afloat, right? Because once you can't touch anymore, you are not in control. Isn't that right? I have jumped in the lake many times when the water was over my head, and I go down to the water's cold, and I'm like, ooh, there's a big catfish going to eat me. So I just kick really hard, and I get back up. And I felt totally just, you know, out there. Something was going to happen. I was absolutely not in control. But as I swam toward the bank, and my feet started to touch, I felt like I was safe finally, because I was standing on my own feet. And I could determine the direction of my path. I wasn't under the, the control of anything else. Spiritually speaking, God is wanting us to jump in the deep water. He's coming at us with His Holy Spirit, trying to wash over us and fill us. And what happens is that we stay in about ankle to knee deep water. We feel His presence, we feel His power, but we're never actually moved by it. Every now and then there's a step. Or a loss of balance or something. When all he wants us to do is just fall back and let go. I tell you, the most beautiful part to me is that my Jesus can not only take us to the deeper water, but he can help us to walk on it. Right? It's not just about getting in over your head. It's about trusting in the Holy Spirit to take you somewhere that you've never been. To see something you've never seen before. Or to do something you've never done before. Maybe you need to sing something you ain't never sung before. Or preach something you ain't never preached before. Maybe God is ready to do something new in you that you ain't never even thought about before because you're willing to get in a little bit deeper with Him now. It's going to take more trust. It's going to take more time. It's going to take more commitment. It's going to take more. But if you want more, He'll give you more, won't He? You want more of Him? He'll give you more of Him. The God of Pentecost is waiting to come down and anoint you for the task that He has got you here for. You want to level up your life? Get more in tune with the Holy Ghost. And when He comes down and He says, come on a little further. Absolutely. I'm letting go. I'm diving in. I'm going deep. How far? How far are we going to take this? I think that eventually you'll just wind up walking on the water. I really believe that. You can get to the point in your life where your faith is so strong. You know you've seen it in people, right? Their faith is so strong. The current does not bother them. It helps them. You know how ships used to sail? It was with wind. It was riding the current. They weren't fighting against it. 
They were going with the flow. They took the momentum, the energy that the earth was producing, and they used that to navigate and go all around the place. And I think we can get further by letting go and asking God, will you take me deeper? I believe the God of Pentecost can come down. I believe that in the Baptist church, you may actually have somebody speak in tongues one day. Mm hmm. Yeah. And I believe that that is going to be a grand and glorious day. And ain't none of us going to be surprised because we are expecting it to happen. Because we have been praying for the Holy Spirit to move in this place, right? And when the Holy Spirit gets to move and somebody starts yabba dabba doing, we just go, Amen, right? I don't know what that was for or who that was for, but amen. Yeah. And if you feel like you need to get up and run, I feel like I need to run, but I can't. I don't need to. I might. I don't know. But I feel like running right now. I feel just so encouraged that the same God, the same Holy Spirit that we read about in this book is the same one that loves me and wants to bless me with His presence. He wants to give me more of His presence. You know. And I'm just like, I don't know if I can stand more. I don't know if I can stand it. But you know, I'm not in over my head yet. I'm not. I don't know if any of us are, are we? Let's jump on in, you know. Let go of the side of the boat. How you know if you know how to swim or not, right? What if you drown? You just go to heaven, right? I mean, if it gets to be too much, Just jump in. Right? Yeah. Now, I don't, I don't, I don't want to fail to mention this. But I'll talk to you later. All right. Here we go. <laughs> we'll make sure we we know what this is about. So, verse number seven. He led me back to the bank of the river, and when I arrived there, I saw a great number of trees on, on each side of the river. And he said to me, this water flows towards the, uh, the Jordan Valley where it enters the Dead Sea. Y'all, these trees here, they, it's a representation of the, the tree of life that gives this fruit off. All right? But y'all, it's even more than that. Because we are called in Psalms the trees by the water that give off fruit. We are supposed to be those trees that when people get out into the water and they start to get in over their head and they need a little bit of help and encouragement, they look to the bank and what do they see? They see those trees. That's a place for things to happen. That's a place for, for some relief, for some help, for some shade. You're the tree. In that scenario, in that picture, that's you. You are supposed to be the relief in the world. The one that's over there on the bank, like, come on, take some rest, take some relief. I'm here for you. That's us. Don't be no little old bitty tree. Don't be no, no, no bush. You want to be a tree. That's all I got. We got any questions? But I got no more questions about that. I could preach this passage of scripture like the rest of the year, probably. It's, you know, I mean, we can break it down and preach a sermon on each depth if we want to. Ankle deep faith, knee deep faith, waist waist deep faith, over your head faith, and then walking on water. Boom, five sermons. You ready, son? You ready? You ready? Sunny, Sunny, just Tommy. I've called you Sunny twice. Why? Probably thinking about me. I wonder what. 